monstrous, complex health morass. But from a basic, fundamental building block perspective, cancer is a cell. And guess what? All cancers begin with one single cell. And at that level, it never ha it's not supposed to happen. It rarely happens at that level. There are multiple safeguard mechanisms that keep the cell from becoming cancerous. Can uh, cells, normal cells, the growth of normal cells is tightly regulated. Do you know a cell will not grow unless it's told to by its neighbors? This is how cooperative cells are. Really amazing when you think about it. A cell will not grow or divide until it has growth signals that come from the neighboring cells. Why? Because the neighbors got to live with the new cells. It's just common sense, common biological sense. If you got a neighborhood of cells, in order for you to move in, the other cells have to agree. They have to actually encourage it. Cancer cells have figured out how to bypass that. A cancer cell is a cell that doesn't need to have signals from its neighbors. It doesn't need permission from its neighbors. You know, if you want to move into an apartment in a, in a controlled rent unit or some fancy apartment building in New York, you've got to have permission from your neighbors. Likewise, in the body. For a cell to grow, it's got to have permission from its neighbors. A cancer cell is a sociopath. It sneaks in. It has figured out how to bypass the requirement for, for, for permission from its neighbors. And the neighbors have anti growth factors they secrete. When, when uh, uh, the neighboring cells don't want to have anybody move in, so to speak, they'll secrete anti-growth factors. Not only do they have growth factors and division factors that will tell cells to divide and grow, but they have anti-growth factors, anti-division factors. Well, guess what? A cancer cell is a cell that has bypassed that step too. So you got these two major mechanisms that keep cancer from happening. One is cells don't grow unless their neighbors give it permission. And the other is cells, uh, the neighboring cells have suppressor elements, suppressor elements, elements that keep suppressor chemicals that keep cells from growing. Cancer cell bypasses both of those. Oh, but there's more. Cancer, uh, ordinary cells die. Ordinary cells have a, a lifespan. You've probably heard of these things called telomeres. I'm not going to get into that. But you have little shoelaces on the ends of cells. They're called telomeres. And when those shoelaces are done, the cell dies. Oh, guess what? Cancer cells have figured out how to bypass that, too. They make their own enzymes. <laughs> they make the, this, is how, this is really unbelievable when you think about it. Cancer cells make their own enzymes for keeping the shoelace intact. Shoelace enzymes, telomerase they call it. Don't even worry about the name. Call them shoelace enzymes. So ordinary cells, they'll die because eventually their shoelace, it's like a little, like one of those little uh, fuses on, a, on a, a stick of dynamite. The telomeres, the fuse shortens and shortens and shortens and shortens. The shoelace shortens and shortens and shortens. Boom, the cell dies. Cancer cells have figured out how to keep their shoelaces, their fuses going forever. They're immortal. They don't die. By the way, this is the, this is the, uh, the model for immortality. It shows you that cells actually can become immortal. Not necessarily, in this case, of course, not in a good way. But cancer cells have bypassed that mechanism too. Oh, there's more. This is why cancer hardly ever occurs, relatively speaking. Even though it seems so disastrous, it's never supposed to happen. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page, brightsideben.com. All the longevity products are up at brightsideben.com. And you can sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off of brightsideben.com. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. Let's see. Uh, I want to tell you a couple more of these a couple more of these mechanisms that cells have for protecting themselves from cancer. You know, seemingly, cancer affects so many people, but as it turns out, according to the American Cancer Society, there's some 10 or 11 million people who have a history of cancer or have been diagnosed with cancer. So if you do the math... 10, 11 million, something like that, divided by 300 something million. It's not a lot of folks. It's 10 million, so it's 3%, right? So 97% of people don't get cancer. That's because of all of these mechanisms that are in place for keeping cells from switching over 
into carcinogenesis, which is actually a growth issue, a growth phenomena. Ordinarily, cells are controlled, their growth, but cancer cells are not controlled. And there's a lot of people, including myself, who believe that that switch over into uncontrolled growth is actually a coping mechanism. It's actually a way the cell copes with stress. And this is the key, you guys. Underneath all chronic degenerative diseases, you're going to find a stressed out, freaked out cell. A cell that is like a traumatized baby. I remember watching once this thing on uh, history of World War II, and they showed Europe, they showed Germany after World War II. Uh, in May of 1945, Germany was, it was unbelievable, really. I mean, all of Europe was just completely trashed, but there were these babies, little children and babies who would just be wandering the streets because their parents were dead. And I remember seeing a picture of this little kid, this little baby, like probably a year old, sitting in the city street in all these bombed out buildings, and this kid was just crying his eyes out in the street that was filled with these bombed out apartment buildings and office buildings and museums, whatever the buildings were. And that's what I think of when I think of a traumatized cell. It's like this little baby in the middle of a street of disaster, of, of complete and utter chaos. That's what a cancer cell is. That's what a sick cell is. It's a cell that doesn't know what else to do. Cancer cell has switched over into a primitive way of utilizing energy. It's on safe mode, like your computer on safe mode, where it can't really do any functions. It just grows. And while I, sometimes we call it a sociopathic cell, that's kind of unfair because it's just doing what it knows how to do. It just knows what it needs to do to survive. It's in survival mode, and this is so important. It's this nature of survival and threat and attack and protection. That's what disease is. And the doctor can't help us at this level. We've got to get this idea out of our heads. Chronic degenerative disease is not medical. If you're on a prescription drug, you've been had. If you're on a prescription drug for any kind of chronic long-term degenerative disease, you're, you've been suckered. You've fallen for it. I don't mean that in a mean, I don't, I don't want to be mean spirited about it here, but we got to keep it real. If you're on an anti cholesterol drug because you think that's going to help you live longer because of, uh, you have had a, have a history of heart, uh, heart attacks, if you're not antihypertensive because you think you're going to live longer because hypertension is associated with all kinds of diseases, if you're on any prescription drug because you think you're going to be better off for it, you've been suckered, you've been taken advantage of by people who either don't know themselves or don't care. And that's what the bright side's all about. It's about handling our business ourselves. And when we understand that underneath all of this, all the chronic degenerative disasters that, we're, that we confront as a country and as a planet are these common, basic, simple breakdowns, we will become free. And that's what this is all about. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us show you how simple and how easy it can be if you're dealing with a chronic degenerative health crisis, if you want to wean yourself off your prescription drugs, if you're sick of prescription drugs, you're sick of the medical model, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Colin in Oklahoma City. What's up, Colin? Good morning. Hey, Ben. Good morning. Hey, buddy. What's going on? Oh, well, I, uh, I talked to you about, uh, right before Christmas, about my wife dealing with all the, all the pregnancy issues with the, the uh, carpal tunnel and all that stuff and emotions. Well, well we've had the baby. Congratulations. And What'd you get? What, what flavor? A boy. A boy. Awesome. Good job. What's his name? What'd you name him? His name's Purpose. Serious? That's awesome. Yeah. Every yeah, time somebody purpose. calls, everybody, every time somebody calls them, they'll be reminded of Purpose. Yeah. That's good. I like that. And, Very clever. And, uh, and uh, well, she is having major, major issues with, like, just, like, anxiety and yeah. depression. And, okay. And, uh, and the doctors are trying to put her on Zoloft and, and Xanax, anything. Don't make me mad. That's just going to make me mad here. I don't want to hear that. All right? Because I know they do that because they're working at the macro level. They're working at the beehive level. She's anxious at the beehive. Did you hear me talking about the beehive and the bee? I did, I did. Uh, doesn't, so they're working at the beehive. Oh, she's anxious? We give her anti-anxiety. But I'm telling you to go to the bee. The bee is blood sugar. The bee is oxygenation. The bee is fatty hormones and digestion. Okay? Those are your bees. Number one, 
I don't want to say this in order of importance. They're all important. So when I say number one, I don't mean it's first. I mean this is the first thing you're going to do, okay? Stabilize the blood sugar. It's vital. Hypoglycemia, low blood sugar will spark off anxiety faster than anything. Well, almost faster than anything. Stabilize the blood sugar. More protein. She's probably protein deficient. Is she breastfeeding? Yes. Okay, this becomes extra important because baby is getting all of her crappy chemicals. All of her anxiety-promoting chemicals, her stress chemicals, they're all going into the baby. Do you follow me? Yeah. She, this is not optional at this point because now she's taking care of somebody else. When, you, when a mom breastfeeds, essentially, her and her baby are one. They're one unit through the breast milk. So it's this, she doesn't have an option now. Now she, this is serious business because can you imagine what it's like for a little baby to have that kind of anxiety? At least your wife, she can, you know, have some reasonable understanding something's going on. The baby doesn't know, but the baby's getting those chemicals. So anyway, I, I'm just saying that to reinforce how important this is. Stabilize yeah. the blood sugar, more protein, more essential fatty acids. Get her on the ultimate EFAs. If she's not, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night. She should be having zero, zero tolerance for dessert. Hang on, Colin, just one thing. She should be, have zero tolerance for dessert. Zero. Not, and, you know, I, say, I usually say when I talk to people about blood sugar and, and diet is, you know, just do it as best as you can. She has to have zero tolerance because now this is about the baby. So fruits, desserts, fruit juices, pies, um, starchy white bread, all of that, avoid it entirely. Replace it with good quality protein. If she can do whey, it's the best. Egg is also good if she can do egg. If she can't do whey or egg, have her go into hemp seed protein. Of course, fish and you know meat and that kind of stuff, fleshy foods, those are going to be good sources of protein as long as they're clean. Bone soup. Bone soup. I'm sorry, you were going to ask me something before I, I cut you off there. What were you going to say? Um, you know, I forget. Okay, I don't worry. This, this is all good information. This is all good information for you, okay? So uh, next thing is breathing, oxygenation. Uh, I said earlier that nothing will trigger uh, anxiety or panic attack faster than sugar. Well, uh, hypoglycemia, oxygen, low oxygen will. So make sure she's deep breathing slowly. She should, she should be spending five minutes in the morning, five in the afternoon, five in the evening, slow, deep breathing, focusing on the exhale, blowing off acid and carbon dioxide. And then third, digestion, especially around fats and fatty vitamins. So in addition to uh, the ultimate EFAs and the fatty vitamins, she's going to need to work on fat absorptions. Don't go away, Colin. This is important, okay? We'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side talking to Colin in Oklahoma. Colin, you there, my man? Yes. Okay, so number one, stabilize blood sugar. Low blood sugar, hypoglycemia will set off anxiety issues, make her feel crappy, make her feel fatigued. She's just generally low energy is basically what it sounds like. And this is very common after pregnancy because her, her estrogen drops, and estrogen can be a kind of excitable type hormone. So this is very common. How's her hair, by the way? Any issues there? How's her hair? Yeah, is it thinning out or at all? Sometimes that happens. Or did it get darker? No. Oh, uh, she's got real thick curly hair. Okay, good. All right, so uh, anyway, blood sugar, stable, treat her like a diabetic. Go ketogenic oh. diet, coconut oil, more protein. You can use glutamine. You know, the glucogel caps, by the way, have glucosamine in there, and glucosamine sometimes helps folks stabilize their blood sugar. So just reading about that. So you may want to get her on the glucogel caps. That'll help her rebuild connective tissue also. Uh, and then... Uh, and then uh, the respiratory issue, the respiratory thing, make sure she's deep breathing slowly, and she should be going out of her way to do it. In addition to just when she's hanging around, you know, she's just, you know, cooking or taking care of the baby, uh, deep breathing. And, by the way, deep breathing before she delivers her milk will help out with the baby. So maybe spend a couple of minutes doing some slow, deep breathing before she, before she breastfeeds. And then uh, last but most certainly not least, focus on di- the digestive system, especially fats and fat absorption. A couple things there. You're going to want her on the ultimate EFAs three, three times a day. You're going to want her on vitamin A and E and probably D if you can't get sun, which you know probably you can't. And then K probably is a good idea too. So we're luck- looking at about 1,000 micrograms of K2 a day, 10 to 20,000 IU of vitamin A a day, 400 IU of vitamin E a day, and 5,000 
1,000 IU of vitamin D3 a day. You'll get a lot of that in the Healthy Start Pack, but I would take extra. And then use lots of fermented foods and probiotics. Very, very important. Lots of fermented foods and probiotics. Well, yes? We just got stocked up in probiotics. Go for it, man. Stay in touch with me. I'd like to hear how you're doing. And i got to move on. Thanks, Colin. Congratulations, buddy. And Happy Thank New Year, you. man. Okay. All right, Dylan, what's going on? Dylan in Texas. Welcome to the Bright Side. Yes, sir. How you doing today? Doing good, my man. What's going on? Man, listen, I love you guys' program. I've been watching, I listened to you guys for some time. I've lost about 40 pounds. No kidding. Congratulations. 